Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés súper bien. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a special opportunity that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of, especially if your goal is to become fluent in Spanish. For a limited time only, my team is opening the doors to listeners of the podcast to take advantage of a free language coaching session. Now, in this session, it's not just we're teaching you about verbs or grammar, but we're really going to do a deep dive into what are your goals for learning Spanish, assess where you are on your journey to fluency at the moment, and help you map out a 90-day plan for how you can get to fluency. So we are going to help you take your Spanish to the next level, whether you're afraid of speaking Spanish or you just get a little bit nervous when you're talking to native speakers, or maybe you've got some of the basics down, but you really know that you struggle with getting your Spanish to flow and your listening skills aren't up to par. Whatever it is, even if it is a specific grammar issue, we will help you map out how to tackle that. And normally these sessions do cost, so we are offering a few slots for free. There are limited spaces available and they'll only be open up through the end of the month. So make sure you sign up. Go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach to book your free language coaching session where we will help you map out a 90-day plan to get to Spanish fluency. Okay, let's get started with the episode. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés súper bien. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a special opportunity that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of, especially if your goal is to become fluent in Spanish. For a limited time only, my team is opening the doors to listeners of the podcast to take advantage of a free language coaching session. Now, in this session, it's not just we're teaching you about verbs or grammar, but we're really going to do a deep dive into what are your goals for learning Spanish, assess where you are on your journey to fluency at the moment, and help you map out a 90-day plan for how you can get to fluency. So we are going to help you take your Spanish to the next level, whether you're afraid of speaking Spanish or you just get a little bit nervous when you're talking to native speakers, or maybe you've got some of the basics down, but you really know that you struggle with getting your Spanish to flow and your listening skills aren't up to par. Whatever it is, even if it is a specific grammar issue, we will help you map out how to tackle that. And normally these sessions do cost, so we are offering a few slots for free. There are limited spaces available and they'll only be open up through the end of the month. So make sure you sign up. Go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach to book your free language coaching session where we will help you map out a 90-day plan to get to Spanish fluency. Okay, let's get started with the episode. I don't know about you, but to me, this past year and a half has just highlighted how important it is to connect with others through community and how difficult it's been to do so through all of the transitions that we've all been facing uh, in our worlds from COVID to online learning and trying to find ways to cope with it, it really has proven that it's important for us to connect with others through community. And in this episode of the podcast, I'll talk about how community can really help skyrocket your language learning progress. And if you're not already a part of a community, I'm going to touch on five benefits to joining a language learning community and how that can really help you make progress to get fluent in Spanish faster. Así que vamos a empezar. Let's get started. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. The show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola, mi gente. Bienvenidos al episodio 136. Welcome to episode 136 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. We are going to be talking all about the power of community today and how if you're not already a part of a language learning community, it can really 
stunt your progress when it comes to moving forward to fluency in Spanish. Now, before I delve into just how being part of a language learning community can really help you make progress to Spanish fluency much faster than if you're doing it on your own. You loners out there, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't hear uh, the last two episodes of the podcast, we talked about language learning types. So go back a few episodes and check that out uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about for the loners. Uh, But in any case, uh, before I jump into that, I wanted to invite you to a special opportunity that's going to be available for this week only. So if you're listening to this podcast after August 14th, lo siento, (laughs) but if it is before August 14th and you're listening to this as this episode comes out this week only, I'm offering a special opportunity just for the listeners of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. I'm offering a free language coaching session and I'll be doing uh, several sessions throughout the week. So if you're interested in getting insight on what you can do to make progress with your Spanish over the next 90 days and reach conversational fluency if you're not already there yet, uh, or if you just need to improve your proficiency and fluency in the language, make sure you save your spot. There are limited spots available. We are offering this completely free And I don't do this often. (laughs) Usually, um, you know, you would have to be one of my clients or part of one of our communities uh, or sign up for a course to be able to get this opportunity. But we are offering it for free this week only. So if you want to sign up for our free language coaching session, just go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coaching. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coaching to save your spot today. Again, we're only doing this for this week and just for our listeners of the podcast. So I hope to see you in a session this week so I can help you really figure out what it is that's keeping you from making the progress you want. Or if you're already making progress, how do you get to that next level and get there quicker? So we'll be delving into all of that this week in our live session. So make sure you sign up before all the spots are gone. Now let's dive in to five main ways that being part of a language learning community can really help you accelerate your progress towards Spanish fluency. Now the first way that being a part of a language learning community can really help you out is one, it provides connection. So as I know you know, we have been dealing with a very unprecedented time in our world and we have just noticed a lot more how much connection is important and how much we miss connection sometimes even in those day-to-day activities that we may have taken for granted like going to the store or going to the post office if anyone still mails things. <laughs> but there there are things that we do in daily life that we just get connection with people. And I think we've started to really notice how much we suffer when we don't have some of those interactions throughout the day, just from what we've been missing uh, throughout this uh, COVID pandemic. And as people go in and out of lockdown over and over again, we really do start to, to feel some of that lack of connection. But for language learning in particular, it can be helpful to have a connection with people who all have a common purpose. So coming together around a goal of uh, speaking Spanish, improving your Spanish, reaching fluency, that can be a really powerful connection to make. And it's also a way that you can meet new people. So I've probably said this before on the podcast, but let's say you're learning Spanish and you really don't have any friends yet that are also learning Spanish. So, and I don't mean other native Spanish speakers or people who already speak Spanish, who have already learned Spanish. I'm talking about someone who is in the trenches with you. They are also trying to learn. They have a goal that they want to reach. These are the people that you can connect with. And trust me, it's much better to have people that can relate to what you're going through currently versus someone who's already achieved a goal that you're trying to achieve. It's just a much different connection when you're sort of in the thick of it with another person or group of people. Um, And just a sort of a side to this, I usually find that in... Um, in my life that communities I've been a part of usually if the people are really committed to the goal 
then I find out that the communities are just much better. They're much better quality. Um, usually paid communities are better than free communities because in a free community, you know, you could really just decide whether or not you want to show up, right? But when there's a community that's really committed to a strong purpose, or people are actually um, putting something on the line, whether it be money, um, another type of commitment. I found that those communities usually just operate much better because they have a higher caliber of people. Think about it, if you're doing something uh, and you know it's free, you could do it whenever you feel like it, maybe you do it, maybe you don't. So I'll give an example of this. Uh, I, I used to run a meetup for Spanish, and if you're not familiar with meetup.com, it's a website where you can really find people to connect with around almost anything. So if you're looking for uh, people who just moved to an area that are single or that uh, have children or have an interest in art or basically anything you can think of, you can probably find a meetup group for it where you are. So uh, several years ago when I was learning Spanish uh, for the first time um, as an adult, I really decided, well, you know, it'd be really nice to uh, attend some meetup so that I can meet other people who are learning and practicing their Spanish. Well, that was great, but then I decided, you know, there really aren't a lot of meetups that are convenient for me, so I'm going to start my own so that I can plan the events and schedule them at places that I like to go to and that actually work for my schedule. Well, universally across the board, and I found this out uh, later on when I actually joined uh, a Facebook group with other meetup organizers, uh, we all found that if we were hosting free events and it is free to join a meetup group, right? They're usually not a fee, even though I think some meetup groups do start to charge now. Uh, but, but we all noticed across the board, no matter how many people RSVP'd, we'd usually have about a 50% show up rate. So about half the people that would RSVP would actually come to the event. And this was, again, pretty consistent across meetups. And this is because there was no real friction to uh, sign up for a meetup, right? You had to sign up for the site once you had an account. You just hit the RSVP button. You may not have even checked your schedule before. You might just go, oh, that looks like a cool event. Yeah, maybe I'll attend. And you just hit RSVP that you're going. But you really don't have any skin in the game, so to speak. There's no real reason for you to follow through and show up. And a lot of people would just not show up and they wouldn't change their RSVP to say they couldn't make it. Um, they're very rare Did people actually give you the courtesy of doing that. So it's just something we were used to as meetup organizers. And you'll probably find this too with other things that you do in your life. If you say, oh, this is free, maybe you show up, maybe you don't. It's really not a big deal and you're not going to lose anything by not showing up. So for this reason, I found that, you know, communities where people, again, are either really committed for some deep intrinsic reason or if they've actually paid to be part of the community, I usually just find a much more supportive much more um, interactive, engaged, and high quality group of people. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for a connection. But I do encourage you to check out sites like Meetup um, as well. Um, also to connect with people uh, in your community that you might find that have different events because this can be a way that you can actually find uh, new groups to be a part of and new language learning communities that may already be around you. The second way that being part of a language learning community can really skyrocket your progress as you're trying to reach Spanish fluency is inspiration. Being inspired and staying inspired and motivated is one of the biggest reasons why people don't make it to their ultimate goal. Maybe you start out and you're, you're full of energy. You're thinking, yes, I want to learn Spanish. I'm going to speak Spanish fluently. But then something happens, right? Uh, maybe uh, something happens at work, right? Maybe you get a promotion or maybe you get a new job. Maybe um, you, you have a child. Maybe you, you move to a different city. You make new friends. Or maybe you just honestly find something else in your life that you find is more worth your time. And before you know it, time is passing and you really haven't made the progress towards fluency that you wanted. Being in a community can really help you stay inspired and stay motivated because you'll get new ideas all the time from people who are also learning Spanish, practicing the language, and want to get fluent. You get to hear other people's wins, so the progress they're making, things that are working for them. You get to share your wins. And also, if there's any new resources or approaches out there to learning language that are effective, 
you actually can find out what's been validated by someone in a community you trust instead of just doing random Google searches or looking for a YouTuber that might be reviewing a product. Um, here you actually will find out things that you know someone has recently implemented if you're actively engaged in a community. So being able to share those stories with other people and being able to hear other people's stories really can inspire you to keep moving forward, especially at those times when you've lost sight of your goal or you're not sure how you're going to stick through another day, another week, especially if you start getting into grammar. <laughs> that could be kind of tough. So the third way that being part of a language learning community can really help you make progress faster is accountability. So you definitely will want to join a community if you're one of those people who will really only do something 100% if you know that someone else is depending on you to get it done. You will want to show up for other people in the community and you'll want to follow through with your commitment to yourself and to them. So whether it's uh, showing up for community events, whether it's promising someone that you're going to look up a resource for them or share an idea or share what you learned that week, these are all ways to get yourself to follow through because now you're accountable to someone else. So accountability can be a really powerful thing that I think a lot of us discount, especially those loners out there. If you're used to learning on your own, you may think I'm just accountable to myself. But trust me, even if you're used to learning independently, having uh, other people involved in the process and holding you accountable, people that you're sharing your goals with, that know what you're doing, that can check in with you and say, hey, so what happened to uh, you working on learning the past tense last month? How did that go for you? Having that accountability can really, really be powerful to help us stay on track and keep moving forward. The fourth reason why you really want to consider joining a language learning community is practice. You'll have an opportunity to practice conversation in Spanish with other language learners that you actually know instead of just random people that you meet on an app. Now, you ladies out there know what I'm talking about. You know how many times have you signed up for an app and say, I want to practice speaking Spanish. My native language is English. And you start getting these friend requests and messages from people, and they're asking you questions that really indicate that maybe they want a little bit more than a conversation partner, <laughs> okay? That, uh, that happens quite a bit. So I think that being a part of a community means that you really get to solidify a group of people that you can practice conversation with because again, you're all connected with that common purpose of reaching Spanish fluency. And of course you wanna make new friends, but you wanna also make sure that you're all there for the same reason. So getting that conversation practice in, in a comfortable, non-intimidating environment where you're not, sure, you're, you're not worried about someone judging you or thinking you might say something wrong, it really does take practice to get used to having those conversations. And being in a community of people that you see each and every week, day in and day out, you're sharing with each other, you get comfortable as a group, then it really becomes a lot easier to practice conversation and you really need that conversation practice time if you're going to reach Spanish fluency. And the last benefit of being a part of a community, instead of just sort of learning on your own and trying to figure things out, is that it's just a lot more fun. It's much more fun when you're learning with a group. Uh, you will definitely enjoy learning Spanish, speaking Spanish, that whole process of getting to fluency a lot more if you are a part of a group that just makes it fun. You'll be meeting new people, you'll be making friends, and through those new connections, you'll start to really notice that it actually is much more enjoyable to do something when you're not the only one. And you will definitely do more often and with more enthusiasm and focus and energy the things that you actually enjoy. So I always recommend if something is not fun, what is the point? Um, because again, you know, we are human beings and it is very hard for us to push ourselves to do things that we find difficult, that we find boring, that we find lonely, that we find, quite honestly, we don't even remember why we were doing it in the first place, right? Uh, so we really do need to spend that time to focus on how we can do things that we 
actually like to do. So just because you want to learn Spanish does not mean that you're going to enjoy reading a textbook about grammar. Now, you might do a lot better having a conversation and having someone explain to you uh, how to use grammar and what situations you can use certain verb tenses and practice using it that way. That might be much more enjoyable to you, especially if you're a social person that doesn't like to sort of sit around with your nose buried in a book or always staring at your phone, interacting with uh, electronic and digital <laughs> digital people um, or just, you know, an AI or something like that, right? Which I know they do have AIs that stimulate conversation, but quite honestly, there is nothing that can replace human connection and interaction. And after all, that's what learning a language is about anyway. You want to be able to connect with people who speak Spanish. You want to be able to communicate with them and to make those connections get closer, learn more about people and explore things that are outside of your comfort zone. So I hope that this has been helpful. Again, the five ways that being part of a language learning community can really help you accelerate your progress to fluency are one, it helps you facilitate connection. Two, it can provide inspiration. Three, you have baked in accountability. Four, it's an opportunity to practice speaking Spanish. And five, it's just much more fun and enjoyable when you're not learning alone. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because next week on the podcast, I will be interviewing a language learner that might be a lot like you. You do not want to miss this conversation. She is going to share how being a part of the Spanish Juan Salsa community in particular helped her to stop spinning her wheels after a decade of trying to get fluent in Spanish, even traveling abroad, doing immersion, how all of that really failed her in the long run and how being a part of our community has helped her make progress faster where she feels a lot more confident speaking Spanish. So I think you'll get a lot out of her story. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you can hear my conversation next week with one of our amazing members of Spanish Con Salsa that inspire me each and every day. I hope that something that you heard in this episode has helped you go one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.